when the growth look good on you, best believe they wanna screw now. I've been trying to climb, devil threw me in the dark. Baby, don't be insecure, you can still go make a mark like. Blow. Could never let them drain my soul now. Blow. Table turning like doorknobs, wow. Blow. I think I'm about to set sail. I'm a walking living legend, walking with my chest yeah. now. Life keep dealing me cards, I keep fitting in love. What's happening, people? What is happening? It's G. You already know the ties, you know the vibes. Big up to everybody who is watching this at the moment. Guys, please make sure you do smash that like button, share, subscribe, comment your thoughts in the comment section. I will make sure I get back to each and every one of you. So, today, why are we here? Why are we here? We're here to talk about Somerville, the Leeds United 22 year old Dutch winger um he's been i guess on the radar you know so to speak there's been a few reports and you know little things like that that have come out in regards to somerville and in regards to you know liverpool holding an interest and i think a few other clubs as well um have held an interest in somerville now just firstly before we i guess get into like you know just taking a look at you know him his strengths and stuff like that i think Personally, I think he's a, uh, I think he's a, a decent player. I think he's a decent player. Of course, as I said, he's only still 22, you know, years of age. So he's nowhere near a finished article, you know, and he seems like one of those players that, you know, if you give him a bit of time, maybe at the right club, he'll be able to develop and, you know, you know, all of these kind of good things. And we'll take a look at his stats from this season because they've been really, really good. And this has been kind of the, the breakout year, you know, so to speak. From Somerville, you know, joining from, um, you know, playing for Leeds United, but joining technically from uh, final, but he's been out on loan at quite a few other clubs, right? Now, obviously, he plays left wing. <laughs> so if he's on the radar, that tells me that Liverpool are looking at a new left winger. Now, if you let go of someone like, uh, well, obviously, they're going to have to let go of Diaz or Gakpo or whoever it is they think can play left wing. If you let go of someone like that, do we feel that Somerville is the right choice? Now, that's not to say that I think he's a poor player. <clears throat> that's not to say that I think he's a, you know, rubbish player or that he can't come in potentially to, you know, do a job. I get it. We don't know with any player how they're going to potentially turn out. Different environment, different vibe. We've seen players go to teams like Manchester United, like Chelsea and completely flop when they've been, you know, originally they were actually deemed to be good players. Um, so we never really and truly know, right? And, you know, that, that's like that for any club, you know, in and around the world. But I just think that with someone like a Somerville, and it's crazy because even prior to doing this video, looking at the stats, looking at the numbers, you know, watching the highlights and thinking back to when I actually watched him a bit more predominantly when he was, when Leeds United were in the Premier League, it was kind of like, he just always seemed like a, a shining light in one of shining lights, you know, maybe, maybe not as much as uh, Nonto, um, I, I, I feel like Nonto was the guy that everybody was looking at because he just seems to be an electric player, you know, forceful, aggressive, skillful, can finish, pacey and all these kind of different things, right? And some of it, obviously, everyone develops at different times. Now, going to come to a club like Liverpool, it's one of those weird, like, if we were to sign him, and again, this is all hypotheticals, right? If we were to sign him, I can't, like, I'll be kind of like, yeah, yeah, you know what? But then I would also look at it think, and think, you know, would you would you realistically sell Diaz and then get him in? Like, he seems like more of a backup to your main starter. And, you know, the guy who comes in. Obviously, I think I mentioned this before in the video I did about, you know, Lenny Yoro. You know, he seems like the same kind of player where you're just almost like, if you were at the club already, it would be fine. But to go out and sign you, that's where I'm a little bit like, hmm, I, I, I just don't really know. Like, are there better left wingers out there? <clears throat> Obviously, <clears throat> do, do you know what I mean? He, like, he, he, it's not as if he's the best of the best and stuff like that. Maybe the price range is good, his age as well. I mean, he's only 22 years of age, but maybe that might fit into, you know, the model that Edwards, FSG and Hughes are trying to kind of fit moving forward. I don't really know. I don't really know. But, you know, I, I'm, I'd be a little bit unsure if I'm being 100% honest with you. I wouldn't sit there and think it's a good signing. I would just think, hmm, all right, is this a player that I'm going to have to wait five years before he actually comes to fruition? You know, how many of those players can you possibly have in a team? I don't see a team trying to win leagues eventually or relatively soon or a team that's trying to challenge on all fronts. 
having too many of those players. And I feel that Liverpool have a lot of those players already in the squad where you're like, Jesus Christ, how many players do you need in the team where, all right, yeah, give him three years, give him two years, give him five years, or in five years' time, he's going to be great, or in two... I feel like we have quite a lot of those players and we have a lot of players who are also past their prime. So it's like we have maybe one or two, would you say probably in their prime, you know, within the squad, maybe like a a Trent, maybe, an Allison, maybe. Um, yeah, I feel like they're like in their kind of prime of whatever we think that is. The rest, Van Dijk, I feel like it's hard to say he's past his prime because that makes it seem like he's poor. But I don't think he's going to ever reach the heights that he was at before. Um, Salah obviously passed his prime. Robertson been past his prime for a couple of seasons now, you know. So to, to then sign more players like this, I'm just kind of like, that's it's great to have a few of those. But I do want majority of my team to be in their prime. I'll be honest with you. Like, that's how I like to see teams. That's when I when I see the top teams out there around Europe and throughout time they have more prime players than they do working up to prime because ultimately you never really know you never ever know when it comes to these kind of players you know whether they're going to match them whether they're going to meet that criteria whether they're going to actually make it all it takes is one injury that's it now they will never reach that potential unfortunately as we've seen with like your Jack Wilshers and people like that your Daniel Sturridge's you know players who you know, you just thought to yourself, man, if they would, if they stayed fit consistently, they would have reached like a completely, you know, different kind of level than they were actually currently at. You know, and I just think that's the same with Liverpool. We always seem to get, yeah, he's, he's, he's just going to get there. He's just going to get there. And I know people will point to, oh, you know, that's what worked for us before. But it's not like Liverpool were winning consistently. It's not like we were winning the league or, you know, stuff like that. They were, it was good for a challenge. You know, and it was cute finishing a point behind and all this kind of stuff. But when we're talking about challenging year in, year out, you know, at times, you, you know, it, it's going to take a while anyway for these players to gel, as we saw. It, it took all the players that we had, the the Van Dykes, the Trents, the Robertson, Salas, from uh, Firmino, Mane, Fabinho, you know, why not? All of these guys literally had to be in at the give or take the same kind of time. And then <clears throat> together, they were able to work towards that. Had a good two years. And then that's been kind of it, really, you know, with Liverpool, you know. So, yeah, for me, I prefer to see a team that has more prime players, if I'm being honest. But obviously, that's neither here nor there. Ultimately, if he's a player on the radar, he's a player on the radar. So, you know, we'll take a look at him anyway. As you guys can see here, these are the kind of two positions that he kind of takes up. Um, you know, left wing, right wing predominantly plays, of course, on on that left hand side. And um, this season, um, you can you guys can obviously see here um, in terms of his positioning. Um, look how many goals he scored from that left wing, and that's why I say if that's the position we're looking at, then certain man in the team gonna have to start looking over their shoulders. Now, this is the championship at the end of the day. Do I rate it? Yeah, I think it's a good. I think it's a good league. Do I rate it highly? No. I don't I wouldn't use that as really a barometer so to speak obviously you can only you can only beat what's in front of you and you can only score against the teams that are in front of you so there is a little bit of that but I've seen with way too many in fact probably every give or take every team that I've ever seen come up from the championship it's a massive gap now he's obviously played in the Premier League before he was okay when he was here but he was just starting out and stuff like that so I'm not going to critique him you know for all of that but when we do sit here and think about you know uh, players, you know, coming from the championship up into the Premier League. In recent times, you can think maybe, <clears throat> maybe an Ivan Tony uh, as an example, someone who was able to take to the Premier League. And then you look at the level of an Ivan Tony now, you know, so to speak. Obviously, he's a little bit older than a, um, a Somerville. I get that, but ultimately, it's not that many players. I feel, you know, even Jared Bowen took a few years in order for him to be even seen as the player that he is you know, kind of today. And again, that goes down to more, you know, the kind of club you go to and, you know, all of these other, you know, various kind of different things. But again, we can only judge him on what he's done, you know, at Leeds United. And, you know, the, the season just gone by. Obviously, Leeds failed to come up um, from the uh, from the championship, but he's done pretty well. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's he, he's done pretty well, you, you know, when we, when we do take a look at, you know, his stats. And I'll show you. So, let's take a look, obviously, at his stats this season. Um, as you guys can obviously see, 49 games in all competitions. You know, scored 21 goals and got himself 10 assists, 31 GA, if we're going to be doing that game. Um, but I'm obviously more... I'm more looking at the goals that he scored, um, which is really, really good. You know, 21 goals in all competitions. You know, that's quite phenomenal. 
um, to be honest with you. And I think, as I said before, this is more of his breakout season. Obviously, Leeds going down into the championship before. You know, I, I guess it was now the time for some of these players. Now, unfortunately, as I mentioned, they weren't able to come up losing to Southampton in the um, in the championship uh, playoff final. But they've had a good team, or they've got a good team, should I say. I do think some of those players, your Archie Gray, Somerville's, you know, players of that kind of ilk, I do think that some of the Premier League clubs might, you know, look to pinch these kind of players because, you know, they they are decent players for some clubs, you know, definitely like the Crystal Palaces, the Brightons and people of that kind of ilk. But again, it goes back to, you know, being at Liverpool. Do I really believe that these players are the ones moving forward? Let me know, of course, what you guys think, you know, in the comment section. Um, on that, you know, in terms of in terms of some of these players, because again, I don't want it to be misconstrued that I think that these players are poor or anything like that. But again, I've just I've watched football for a very long time. I know how not I can't say I know how it goes, but I have enough evidence to say that some of these players that you know we look at in certain teams in certain leagues, they're just never going to cut the mustard at some of these clubs, you know. And again. Things might be different now because we've got a new manager. It's a different, you know, potentially a different way, um, even though it's quite similar to the way that, you know, Klopp used to play. It's going to be a little bit different in certain areas. Will that then potentially pl um, play a part in some of the players that we're looking at in terms of their kind of profile? Of course, we'll just obviously, um, you know, have to, have to kind of, you know, uh, wait and see. Um, as I mentioned before, of course, moved um, from Fine Yard. Um, he had actually bounced around um, on loan uh, at quite a few clubs, um, to be honest with you, uh, prior to that. I mean, he never actually played an official game from what I can see here uh, for Feyenoord. Um, of course, coming up through their youth ranks and stuff like that, wasn't really able, you know, to, to, to kind of cut the mustard, so to speak. He weren't really able to cut the mustard, um, if I'm being totally, you know, honest uh, with you. <clears throat> the couple of clubs that he um, that he played for, as you guys can obviously see, there's a switch in there. FC Dortchett, um, Dortchett, um, and Den Haag as well. Um, again, played games there out on loan. Leeds United obviously then finally saw something in him and decided, you know what, this might be a player that we can potentially use. And right now, it's looking like a a good little signing because I do think they can sell him for you know quite a quite a bit of money. Um, to be honest with you, um, considering he came to Leeds United you know back back in 2020 um so we're talking four years ago four years you know he's 22 years of age he came in four years ago so he was only 18 18 slash 19 uh when he joined uh leeds united he joined on an undisclosed fee as well um i don't think it was that much maybe near the two million mark or something or potentially even less than that um i'd have to double check but again <clears throat> kind of came here I know, obviously, under Jesse March at the time, he wasn't really, when he, obviously, when he first kind of come in and they came up into the Premier League, he wasn't really, like, playing and stuff like that. And I know from reading um, a few of the reports and news and stuff about him, at that time, he was looking at it thinking, mate, come on, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, I'm good enough to play, do you know what I mean? And, of course, at the time, I think when he did actually start playing for Jesse March, that's when Leeds United did have a couple of injuries in forward areas. So again, and, and I think Jack Harrison at the time, he was kind of off form. So this is your opportunity. And again, opportunities, opportunities, opportunities. All you need is the right type of opportunity. And then boom, that's going to be you, you know, moving forward. So yeah, man, kind of bounced around a little bit. But like I said before, he is, he is somewhat of a decent player. This is his heat map, um, as we can see here, as I mentioned before, all on that left hand side. Um, yeah, like <laughs> it's so crazy. Obviously, when you're doing these kind of things, it's, I mean, I, I can't find it, but there's going to be people out there, you know, the data guys, the analyst guys, and even Liverpool, if they are really have been watching him, they will have data from last season, this season, and you know, all the other seasons that they, you know, they've been watching someone like a Somerville. When a player is coming off of a really sick season, I feel like it's sometimes I find it so difficult because sometimes it's like hard to judge a player who's coming off a really good season that sounds weird right me saying that how you know if they're coming off a good season it must be good right but we know that's not the case we fully know like we've fully seen examples of players who come off a good season or a good half season gone moved on to another club all of a sudden nowhere to be seen <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Nowhere to be seen, not as good as we thought they were, couldn't make that step up, yada, 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 all that kind of good stuff. And then it's just like, what do you kind of do now? There are cases, though, 
<clears throat> of some players who will, after one good season or half a season, you know, make that kind of grade and, you know, potentially push on and push forward. But I don't really feel like that, that number's that high. If I, I bet if we were to go through, like, a list, especially if we're just looking purely just Premier League, and we went through a list um, of players like that, I don't think you'd find many. And even if you were to find however many you do find, let me know in the comment section how many of those play for top clubs. I, I think that number would be a tiny percentage because top clubs are not going to realistically... We ain't got time for that. And it, I mean, this is me saying that Liverpool thinking they're a top club, right? But we ain't got time for that. And that's what I mean by some of these players. Again, this probably sounds like I'm getting on to someone like a Somerville, but like, I feel like he's a decent player. But I can only be honest to what I see how I look at it, how I look at Liverpool moving forward and stuff like that. If you want a cheap option, then yeah, you just go for it. Like simple. He seems decent enough. Um, would he be my main left winger? No, but if he comes in, do I see him being, unless like the other player is going to be like Raskalia, for example, then maybe he might look at it and think, okay, maybe I just hold my corner for a hot minute. But he seems like he's a player who's trying to, he's on the trajectory at this moment in time. He's just coming off a fantastic season. Heck, for all I know, Leeds United might keep him by the time that this video posts we might find out that he signed a new deal with Leeds United like we like we never really and truly know so when it comes to someone like him that again those are where my questions kind of lay and I think I saw a report you know come out um you know uh, today actually uh, at the, today's the 27th of May and the report was a news report coming out saying that you know Liverpool looking at um I think it was another player uh, Bakayoko player I really really like but he doesn't apparently fit the kind of, um, uh, would we say, uh, profile of forwards that Liverpool apparently look at, which I found hilarious because they, they stated that they were, you know, it had to be someone who has had a few seasons of goal scoring, like, you know, a few good seasons of goal scoring, you know, in that kind of department, which made me laugh because I was like, if I looked at the attack, the, 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 did they? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I mean, Nunes won, good season. Uh, maybe Gapo potentially um good season diaz won i would say uh yeah <laughs> so you know but then again that was not when edwards and hughes and everybody else was actually there so fair enough but if we're looking at that then again some of those only had one and we don't know if he can even do it at this level we know he can do it at the championship level which we know is a lot easier than the premier league so again is that something to trust is that gonna be if, if that's the kind of profile you're looking for hence why I need a more seasoned player. You can be 23, 24, 22, whatever. You can be those ages and still have years behind you, still have years of consistency behind you. So that's why. And it, but it's not to say I couldn't sign someone like a Somerville, but, you know, I would need someone in the Diaz kind of, or maybe a year, or a year younger kind of age bracket first as my seasoned guy before I then start saying, okay, yeah, let me pick on. You know, let me go and grab a Somerville as well. And that's perfect. I'm set up on that side for the next eight years or whatever it is that people love to say. Oh, we're set for the next 10 years, even though football never works like that. But, you know, at least for the next three years, I can at least say, OK, I've got this, you know, as opposed to just kind of sitting there and saying, yeah, maybe, you know, in three years time, you know, by the time Slot's first contract, you know, is starting to run out or whatever, then, yeah, maybe we can, maybe he will turn into something. We don't really have time, man. And, and, and that's the problem with top clubs, unfortunately. They don't really have time. And you can see the ones who try to give time to certain players, look how long they go without winning things. Arsenal, Liverpool, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Manchester United currently. Look how long they go without winning the Premier Leagues or Champions Leagues and stuff like that, you know, kind of thing. Chelsea's and we ain't got time. <laughs> you want to play that game? You want to play the long game? That's absolutely fine. Guess what? You ain't winning nothing. You ain't winning what you think you should be winning. You're going to sit there and grab your FA Cups here, your League Cups there. And, you know, you, you may even go on a little Europa League run, you know, every 12, 15 years, yeah, potentially. But the reality is you're not going to be winning consistently enough to even be put into those kind of conversations. And that all comes down to the type of player profiles that you do, you know, eventually go out and sign. But, you know, again... We'll kind of wait and see. We'll kind of wait and see. Now, over to his stats. Uh, this is from, of course, FB Ref. Uh, let's take a look at this. This is defensive stats, actually. Uh, tackles, pretty good. Um, 1.57 per game. Tackles, one, one, uh, one tackle per game per 90 minutes, should I say. Uh, tackles in the attacking third, 0 0.49. 
uh, percentage of dribblers tackled, 53.8, which puts him, these puts him in the, you know, the under the top five, um, the top five percent of a lot of these uh, kind of metrics. Um, so when I was looking at that, I said, okay, that might be, again, the data guys at Liverpool, they might want that because we know that Liverpool like to press. That's kind of our ethos. No, it doesn't even matter who what slots come in to do. That's the ethos. That's kind of the way that we kind of want to play. So I'm assuming that with the type of players that we may look to go and sign, that's the kind of things, or those are the kind of things that we're going to potentially, you know, be looking at. But again, we'll kind of have to, you know, wait and see. Um, you got here as well, um, the possession stats, touches, really good touches in attacking third, in the penalty box, take-ons 2.52. I know everyone keeps talking about, you know, Mo Salah and, you know, can't beat his man, can't take on his man. Well, you got uh, uh, Wingy. I mean, Diaz does it as well, by the way, but, you know, we can play that him. Um, but you got this guy here, 2.52. You know, that's really, really good. Uh, successful take-ons, uh, carrying distance, progressive carries. You know, that, that's really good. You know, um, over five per game. That's really, really good. Again, maybe we're looking for something like that. Maybe he's more similar to Diaz than we care to admit, or maybe than I care to admit. Again, <clears throat> these are all strengths, I feel, you know, of someone uh, someone like a Somerville, um, if I'm being totally honest with you. Again, here, we're taking a look. This is like his passing stats. Stop Passing stats are really good when I took a look at those passes completed. You know, really good short passes he's really good at. And you can tell when we talk about his strengths, when I show you like the diagrams and things like that, that's something that he's actually really, really good at is these little combinations, these one twos that he's really, really good at because then he's able to, you know, get in behind uh, with those. So again, stats are, are, are relatively calm, you know, when you compare him to, you know, I'm assuming to other players in and around, you know, who play in that same position. Stats are kind of fine. I, I don't really have a problem. And his stats are going to be looking good anyway, especially after season, after the season that he's kind of had. And when the fact that Leeds, you know, um, I showed here, this is where like Leeds mainly, you know, their danger areas, you can see on that left hand side, the side that he plays on. Again, he is their star man. He is their danger man. So I do kind of expect that. And Leeds are one of the better teams, you know, in the, they are one of the better teams in the championship. So I expect them to have more possession than, you know, than most teams to be more dominant than most teams. And when you've got that one star player, I do expect, you know, to see statistics really like that so again goes back to what i mentioned when i spoke about uh lenny euro you know uh yesterday you know i, I believe oops, i say yesterday but yeah so uh, the video that dropped um um you know uh, on the monday is that depending on what team you are obviously certain things are going to be catered to you in certain aspects now you put leads into the premier league do we see that same thing probably not Heck, we might see them attacking down a different flank because he might be doubled up on. And if he's doubled up on, Leeds might not have the same kind of outlet. Who knows? Again, not to dismiss Leeds. I like Leeds. But it's just one of those kind of things that is, is difficult to really gauge. And this is for any real player. And this is why more often than not, when you hear me speak about a player, it's never... I mean, there might be the odd one or two, the Laminia mouth. But again, I mean, if you ain't got eyes, then, you know, you could just tell that there's a there's a special player in there anyway, just from what he's been doing at this current moment in time at an extremely high level playing for Barcelona and Spain, right? But he's only like uh, 16, 17 years, you know, of age. With other players, it's always going to be difficult to kind of gauge where they're at, how can they make this step up, this, that, and the third. Hence why I'll only, you only really see me talk, talk about players who have had a couple seasons at least. Let me see a couple seasons of good work, then I can judge you. It's difficult. I, I don't want to judge you for one season because if I did that, I would say Zabozalai, crap, Gravenberch, crap, um, Gapo, you know, Nunes, all these. I'll just say that they're all crap when the reality is, are they really crap? Let, let's see a body of work. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's see a body of work you know, from these kind of players. And then we can, you know, really judge, you know, then you can look at a Muziala, for example. And again, I'm just using, you know, the best of the best, but it's just, you don't say these players are sick necessarily from the off, unless they're the one in a million kind of wonder kid who, you, like I said, Lamin Yamal, where you're like, I don't need to see a body of work. I know you're good. <laughs> you know, kind of feel like it would be more of a shock if you fell off a cliff than it would be you not making it to an even higher level than you're currently at, right? But the Jamal Muzialas, the Pedris, and the people of that kind of ilk, it's not like you, you always looked at them and said, yeah, from the off. They, we also had to see a body of work from these guys because it's all well and good looking good at first. But then if you're not be able to produce that, 
that's where things get a bit skewed. And again, not to say that some of it falls into their bracket. He's 22 years of age anyway, but not to say he falls into that kind of bracket, but it is one good season. And I wouldn't be comfortable really. I, I, not to say I can't get behind the signing. Obviously, he plays for Liverpool, he plays for Liverpool, right? But I definitely won't be sitting here and, you know, saying I'm extremely happy that we signed him. I think that would be a lie. And I think most people would be lying to themselves. You know, I, I don't really care what anybody wants to come out with any statistics or, or whatever. You can't fool me and try and explain to me that, yeah, of one season, yeah, this is the guy that we should really go out and really sign. It's more, he's the secondary kind of character in this. He's the, yeah, maybe once you've got your, your main Don in, you get this guy. Get this guy and he can be a backup to the other guy. Perfect. I've got no problems with that because that's the role he should be playing at a club like Liverpool. See this kind of level, whatever level you want to see at Somerville, but let's say the level I think he's at at this current moment in time, that is what I want to see from my bench players. That's the level. This kind of quality, bench player. Why? Because when he comes on, then perfect. You, you know you know what I mean? Brilliant. That's the kind of level, you know, because we can, we're trying to compete. Whether, we, whether we're going to you know, actually win <clears throat> or anything like that. Forget all of that. It's just, bro, I just, just compete. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Just compete. And you go do that by having quality players, right? You can only, if you're going to go out and sign them and you're not trying to use someone in the youth system, please bring in quality. I really don't want to see too many of these projects and you're not sorting out what we need right now as of today. That's where I feel Liverpool have gone wrong for so many years is that you're so worried about five years time that you're not worrying about what's going on today. Hence why you're going to continuously keep going through these long droughts of not winning the league, not winning the league, not winning the league, Champions League and all these kind of things because you're so your priorities are so, sort of like all over the gap. Yeah, we know financially Liverpool this, Liverpool that, blah, blah, blah. But I'm sure from what I've been told in recent weeks, trophies are supposed to mean more, right? So if they do, that's the currency. That's the currency. But, you know, again, I don't want to go too far, you know, too far off topic, you know, because again, this isn't even really about Somerville, so to speak. This is just more, he's just a perfect example of the type of profile of player that we will always kind of go for obviously under this regime and stuff like that which is cool i really got a problem with it but just know what that then means moving forward just just know in your heart of hearts or in your in your mind know what that means that okay he's not he's okay and maybe we might see yeah maybe this might happen blah 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 his stats look good and whatever whatever but he's gonna come up to Liverpool he probably won't do well in the first season might take the second season no problem we see that at quite a few big clubs second season still gonna be a bit iffy he's gonna have some good games and some bad games probably more bad games than good games but the good games will be the one where everyone's gonna be like oh he's still good let's keep him third season we're gonna be talking about no oh, okay no nah, he's improved in this he's improved in that I've seen this story before man been supporting this club over 25 26 27 years I know the story. I know how this goes. I've seen different regimes at this football club. I've seen this regime that we're currently at. I kind of know where this is going to go. But let's wait and see, man. But that's enough of me going off on a tangent. To his strengths, right? To his strengths. So, one thing I do like about him is what I mentioned before is his combination. Is his combinations. I think his name is Rutter. Uh, Rutter. Uh, from Leeds United, um, again, another de uh, somewhat decent player. Their combinations are really, really good in the championship, um, uh, you know, this season. And I think um, when we're looking at it, the, the type of player that Somerville is, he's a player who likes to run in behind. He's a player who likes to, you know, run beyond the striker, you know, at times. He will always make that run, you know, trying to get in behind, you know, the defences and things like that. This is obviously against us, the, 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 the picture on the top. This is obviously against Liverpool when they beat us 2-1 a couple of seasons, uh, the, the previous season, um, than this, than, Dan's just gone. And one of the things I noticed about him was he was always making that darting run. You see the space? He's always trying to get in there. He's always trying to make himself available for that pass. So guess what? Play that ball in behind. If you guys see at the bottom screen as well, again, making that run, you know, beyond the striker. Because why? He's got the pace to be able to get in there, and he can finish. He is—he is, he seems like he's a pretty—he seems like he's a bit of a composed finisher. He doesn't seem like he's someone who kind of rushes things or anything like that. He seems like a composed um, finisher. He likes, it, as we saw with the stats, he likes to take on his man. He likes to dribble. He likes to, you know, get, um, get down the line and then potentially even cut back, or he's going to be putting that ball, you know, into the box. And I think when I look at all of those kind of things, he has the makeup of someone who. Yeah, that, that seems like a somewhat decent, you know, decent kind of player, you know, moving forward. Where I would look at his 
would I say somewhat weaknesses. Now, weaknesses was a, was a um, was a weird one when I was looking at it because I was like, I don't even feel like. Ob- obviously, he's still young, so you, you could you, you could probably reel off things in terms of where if you looked at the numbers, maybe there's certain areas that oh, okay, yeah, he could do this better or he could do that better or whatever the case may be, and that would be all be true, I guess. But for me, it's just more about the consistency. I'll be honest with you, that that was more than anything. Um, and making the right decisions. I think that was more key for me, was him being able to make the right decisions at the right moment in time. You know, do I think his decision-making is always good? No, but at the same time, it's gotten a lot better than when we first ever saw him. But from some of the games I even watched of Leeds this season and then watching him, maybe it, again, being at Leeds United, being the main man, maybe that kind of onus on him he just felt like he had to do certain things, you know, dribbling, trying to dribble when he should have just passed it, you know, because he could have just played a one-two and then he'd be in anyway, you know, kind of thing for that next pass. At times, I felt like you're not releasing the ball quick enough. And again, we've got players like that who are doing that already. Do I want another one? Probably not. But, you know, that's more where I look at him. It's just more his decision-making and the consistency. Can he be this consistent? And again, obviously, I'm not saying he's going to replicate these numbers next season. If he were to move to a Liverpool, I wouldn't even be looking for that. It's just more consistency in your style of play. What makes you good? What are you good at? Can you consistently do that? And then, obviously, hopefully, if you can bring that to a team like Liverpool, then, you know... Hopefully, hopefully that will hopefully that be a good thing. Hopefully that be a good thing, man. But yeah, as I said before, um, Somerville, decent, decent player, decent player. He's not the player that I'm looking at um, in terms of wingers. If I was to go out and try and sign a left winger, um, that's not really the type of player I would sign. But as I said before, you know he's a decent kind of player, man. He's a decent player. You can maybe see him in the team somewhere. Um, obviously on that left-hand side predominantly. But I guess the question I would ask Liverpool fans more so is, would if we sold a Diaz, as an example, and I'll leave you guys on this, if we sold Diaz, would you be happy getting a Somerville in? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. That's the um, Scout Report kind of done and dusted on um, Somerville. Uh, let me know what you guys think in regards to him, uh, whether he's a player that you guys like, don't like. Give me your options of other players out there as well. Don't just say, oh, I don't like him, blah, blah, blah. Give me some names. Give me some options, man. And we'll chop it up in the comment section. Sky Report done and dusted. I'm G. Make sure you guys smash that like, share, and subscribe. We out.